Hi guys, maybe the third time is a charm here. It is a dark and gloomy, rainy, depressing last day of the fall of 2020. Do you believe that we have arrived at the final day of the fall of 2020, which would be this gloomy Sunday, December 20th, 2020. Oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles, and I am just figuring out how do we wrap up the last day of the fall of 2020, and with so many things to choose from, I'm actually going to run with uh, this suggestion from uh, Lieutenant Aaron down in Florida, who has sent me this article from some outfit um, called OCCRP. Not even sure who they are. Uh, and what this is a story of, we're going to go to Sub-Saharan Africa to wrap up the fall of 2020 appropriately enough. Uh, this is an absolutely perfect microcosmic snapshot of everything that is wrong with this planet in the waning days of 2020. It, uh, you know, a lot of the dots are here. And this is a long, involved story by some journalist named John Grobler, who has done his homework. I'm going to put the link on here. I suggest you read this long story yourself if you're trying to figure out the way the world works. But I will sit here and probably read about the first half of it for you, since I have nothing better to do with myself on this gloomy day. So we're going to head off to Namibia and draw some dots, connect some dots. In this article titled, They Are Finishing the Trees, Chinese Companies and Namibian Elites Make Millions Illegally Logging the Last Rosewoods. You know, Manga Bay has been reporting on this assault this all-out assault against the very last remaining old-growth rosewood trees left on this planet for several years, and there won't be many more to go before they're gone. So we're going <clears> to <throat> dig a little deeper into this <coughs> tragedy unfolding in sub-Saharan Africa. <clears throat> Take it away, John Grobler. Jacobus Oma looked sadly at the stockpile of several hundred ancient rosewood logs he had just helped to load onto a Chinese-owned truck in northeastern Namibia. Some were centuries old, so large they dwarfed his small frame. Quote, the children will never see trees like this in our lives again. He said, recalling how the rosewood seed pods were traditionally a vital source of food for indigenous San people like himself during the dry season. Oma had accompanied the teams that felled the trees earlier this year on the boundary of Kadum National Park in Namibia's Okavango region, a part of the San's ancestral lands. <clears throat> Back in Noma, a sparse collection of buildings on the southwestern edge of the park where he lives with his family, Oma told me he helped load the prized hardwoods for one of the Chinese-fronted companies that dominate the local illegal logging trade here. Quote, I am not being paid. I am only helping out with the timber loading here, he said, explaining that he he hoped to at least get something to eat. Oma's ripped top and pants were smeared with black stains from, from moving the wood, some of which had been charred by fires set by local farmers in the hope of rejuvenating their land. Yes, the logs are among thousands of protected trees that have been illegally cut down on land leased as, quote, 
settlement farms to political elites and war veterans by Namibia's ruling Southwest Africa People's Organization Party. I found more than a dozen stockpiles of timber along the routes the loggers use, ranging from hundreds to thousands of logs. Uh, all appeared to be from three protected protected hardwood species, the main one target being the African rosewood and also Zambezi teak and something called a kiot tree. A forestry expert described the, the stockpiles all run by two Chinese fronted companies as evidence of what he called, quote, industrial wood mining which is the only thing you can call this level. It's not even logging. It is industrial wood mining. I think that is the perfect term for what's going on here and everywhere else on the planet today. Despite a moratorium on harvesting these prized hardwoods in Namibia since November of 2018 and a ban on trading raw timber since early August, the plunder has continued. Imagine that. On two recent road trips through the Okavango and Zambezi regions, together covering 6,600 kilometers, I saw not one single mature African rosewood tree left standing. The farm leaseholders could have made as much as one and a half million dollars per year from selling the wood. But the true winners, you know, they're talking about the elites, uh, the, these you know, elite leaseholders probably put about one and a half million dollars, but who knows, in lining their pockets. But the true winners appear to be the Chinese fronted companies that control the trade with timber valued at many millions of dollars exported in just months. According to government officials, forestry department data and figures from wood brokers on the ground indicate that these exports are declared at just a small fraction of their value, leading to vast sums being lost in uncollected tax revenues. Obviously, uh, these, you know, these elites and party loyalists did not respond to request for comment. Do you think so? <clears throat> so a reporter, meaning John Grobler, visited the Okavango logging region twice in October and November of this year, posing as a prospective wood buyer. He found evidence of illegal logging at every turn from sawmills operating on the settlement farms themselves to the stockpiles of often fresh timber along the route. And so when I'm using the first person I here, I am speaking, you know, for John Grobler, who I'm sure risked his life going undercover as a wood buyer. I can't, I can't believe uh, he lived through this. <clears throat> Though no new three-month harvesting permits have been issued since 2018, local wood bro brokers assured me that the paperwork would not be a problem. Quote, you leave it with me, brah said one worker in the regional capital of Rundu, a fast-growing frontier city on the Angolan border, who gave his name as Lobo. I bet, Lobo the wolf. Some farmers said they still had plentiful kiat trees uh, on their land just waiting to be felled, but everywhere 
I was told that rosewood trees, which have grown in the region for some 700 years, are now scarce. Quote, they are finishing the trees now, said one worker who is running a stockpile for a Chinese company in Tam Tam in the middle of the logging region. He claimed the 850 logs stored at the depot, which had been harvested in June, were from the last mature rosewood trees left in the area. The harvesting of hardwoods in Namibia is often massively wasteful. Loggers tend to use only the cores of the trunks of mature trees and ignoring regulations aimed at preventing uncontrolled large-scale harvesting. I saw telltale signs that workers on the Okavango settlement farms are using the same methods in other areas, hmm, including big branches left discarded at harvesting sites and the stumps of huge trees. And you need to go on the link to see some of the photographs he managed to take of these massive stumps, looking a lot like the giant redwood stumps in our own country. The timber from the settlement farms was taken to stockpiles where it was then loaded onto trucks mostly bound for the Walvis Bay port. Transport permit records at forestry department offices showed it was destined for buyers in China, Vietnam, and South Africa. Most of the addresses listed for the exporting companies appeared to be false, leading to empty fields or residential apartment blocks, I bet. An internal auditor's report on the logging by, by Namibia's Ministry of Agriculture, Water, and Forestry estimated that around 32,000 logs of protected hardwood equivalent to around 210 truckloads were moved from Okavango to the port of Walvis Bay between November 2018 and March of 2019. So just in a few months, uh, 32,000 logs on, you know, 210 of these giant trucks, so just in a few months. Of that, of those 32,000, some 22,000 were stored in, a, in warehouses and containers near the port, while about 10,000 were exported to China and Vietnam, said the report. <clears throat> Namibia is a signatory to the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, which banned international trade in rosewood in 2017. Uh, as, in part as a response to rising demand for the redwood furniture in Asia. And of course, a lot of that uh, furniture in Asia is being shipped to the US and Europe. If you're missing a dot here, where do you think the stuff is ending up? Um, but the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime noted in its latest World Wildlife Crime Report released this year that the timber industry, you will not believe this, guys, is inconsistently regulated. Quoting the report, unlike illicit drugs, Timber is not sold into illegal markets, but rather fed into legal industries where its illegal origin is obscured. Timber harvested illegally in one country may be legal to import into another, close quote. In Namibia, all indigenous hardwood tree species are nominally you know, by name only, 
protected by the Forest Act of 2001, which was designed to prevent uncontrolled logging. But in 2016, Chinese wildcat loggers started shipping illicit timber from Angola, Zambia, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo through a Namibian port. And by the following year, the Rosewood Gold Rush had reached Namibia itself, starting in the Caprivi State Forest in Zambezi before spreading to the settlement farms of Okavango. And, okay, I'm going to, this is in several, I'm, I'm going to read one more chapter here uh, titled Political Plunder. Around 500 settlement farms in the region, each covering some 2,500 hectares, which is about 7,500 acres, uh, were handed to war veterans and political elites starting in 2005. The recipients included the current Minister of Home Affairs, uh, Immigration, Safety, and Security, Franz Kapofi, a former governor of the Okavango region. Other recipients of these, you know, these political favors were the current mayor of Rundu and several senior civil servants. They, too, did not respond for comments. Apollius Kongina, who worked at the Ministry of Lands and Resettlement at the time and is now uh, the director for Okavango and Caprivoli secured five farms for himself and his family in a block close to the National Park. Kanyinga, in, Kanyinga insisted that he had nothing to do, nothing to do with the fact that his cousins received a farm next to his own farms. Hmm. He admitted he was then working for the Lands Ministry, which allocated the farms, but denied he was a deputy director. The poor soil in the region means most of the land is unsuitable for growing crops, and because the farms lie north of the Red Line, a veterinary cordon meant to stop the spread of foot and mouth disease. They also cannot be used to raise livestock for trade. That leaves the hardwoods as the only resources of commercial value on the land. For 26 years, the difficult terrain and local laws protected these trees. The last old-growth rosewood trees of the African teak forest left along the banks of the Oma Taco, an ancient river that is now only a seasonal floodplain. But in 2017, Forestry Director Joseph Halwa decide, decided the laws no longer applied to Chinese logging inside the Caprivi State Forest and the Okavango region for own use permits with the arrival of Chinese dump trucks that can handle the drive. This meant the farms were open for business. By 2018, the plunder had started. Pictures showing truck after overloaded truck leaving the area caused a national outcry, prompting the Environment Commissioner to stop issuing new harvesting permits that November. But the logging has continued. The internal forestry report found that leaseholders had pressed on with nearly 
400 licenses to fell anywhere from 600 to 1,200 trees per farm, and there's more than 500 farms being handed out by forestry director Joseph Helwa, despite not having the legally required environmental certificate. Helwa, too, did not reply to a request for comment. And I am about one half of the way through this, guys. And uh, this man, John Grobler, has done his homework to pen this long, involved story that virtually nobody on this planet will read. Not one person, I bet, I'm offering the link to is going to read this whole story. And, uh, and that's doomers. And even if everyone on the planet did read the story, nothing would change. Nothing would change. But anyway, what's getting ready to change for me is my uh, hungry belly. Because uh, I have a big plate of something with uh, my name on it at Chicken King. Uh, I am going to have my last meal of the fall of 2020 at the appropriately named Chicken King. And I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy your last meal of the fall of 2020 while you still can because winter 2020 the few uh, days of winter 2020. Be here tomorrow at 5 in the morning Eastern Time. And then the winter of 2021. Rolling in in a few days. Bye, guys.